Hey folks, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, I am Julian here, the bearded bombshell of the Scottish drag scene. Today we're going to be looking at the brand new episode of Drag Race UK Season 2, Episode 7 in the Lockdown Super Heroes Runway. Basically this runway is similar to kind of like drag on a dime, but I think the idea is it was objects you could basically find around your house. So like Brillo pads being one, like Ikea bags I guess being another. But essentially, drag on a dime, unconventional materials made into glamorous fashion. And we have some really great hits and some extraordinary misses for this runway, which I'm very excited to talk to you all about. First queen to rock on in we have is Tace doing the Brillo pad kind of coat with a thong. Mm, doesn't really kind of work. It, you know what? Tace could sell me anything and she to totally sells this down the runway but in comparison to the rest of the looks that we get to see it is simple in its look even if it took hours and hours to really take apart those brillo pads as she says in episodes i get she may have taken apart 200 or whatever just to make what she did but still in comparison there's just not much of a design concept there and that's what you sometimes fail to see with some queens on certain seasons when they're like oh i put in all this work i stoned it blah blah, blah. but it's like where was the design element <laughs> to the challenge you know yeah you spent hours and hours on creating this look but you didn't really put much thought into the actual design of the look and that's what I think Tace has really failed on here. She's really not got a whole concept in mind. She's just like, I'm gonna take the Brillo pads, take them apart, make it fashion. And that was about it. <laughs> and the thong part looked really kind of off as well. It was like it was like tied together just so it wouldn't shift about. And then the Brillo pads that she did have on the kind of I don't know what it is, like it's not quite a coat, it's not a dress, you know, it's just kind of like a bust piece and then some arm kind of puffs here. They were, just because it's all like unraveled, they were just like sticking to each other as she moved and like it'd pull and it just looks like she's got a hairy armpit, you know, like, and you know what, for some drag queens, that's their aesthetic. I will give them that. I just don't think it's Tace's. <laughs> it was very impactful when she first walked out, which I did think was great, but the longer she was on the runway, the less and less I liked it. So unfortunately, Tace, it is a hag. Next in is our Glasgow Queen Lawrence Cheney giving Iron Brew realness. Love this look, so cute. Very Scottish in a totally different twist way. Love it. And all the details here are just fantastic. And the fact that she made that out of material, like I don't think any of the materials they really had had any stretch, but it was still so incredibly fitted to her body. Whether she used a corset that she already had as kind of like the kind of backbone to kind of the bodice that she had. Fair enough, that's part of the rules, you're allowed to do that. But also like it was just so flush and well put together, like you can see any kind of bulges of the blue and even if it was I bet it was covered by those orange bits of that kind of boning like you know it was so well thought through it was just it pinched in her silhouette as always Lawrence knows her body say it <laughs> week in week out she knows her body through and through and then I love the little bustle at the back again just the whole blue and orange look all the way through it was just such a great choice like such contrasting colors as well opposite in the color wheel you know and then she thought of silhouette which is fantastic and then she had the details with the little hooks that had the feather duster attached to it as well and then the little orange balls in the face i do agree they shouldn't need the ones on the eyebrows but i did how it, again it connected in with the hair and it all connected into the bodysuit the corset the feather dusters it was all those two shades and they all work together incredibly well lawrence hits a gag next up is the fashion queen ohora giving us fashion on the runway this was the most incredible that ohora's looked all season long finally oh this is such a look for ohora Girl, you have done it again, turning a look out on the runway and doing it so flawlessly. Wow, this was stunning. Honestly, my favorite look of Ahura's. The whole season so far, if she's able to do a look better than this, I would be incredibly surprised because this was exceptional. And again, she thought of how she's gonna 
wear on the runway as well. I think a really good part of drag is like how do you take your outfit but then make it a performance piece of its own and when she snapped her arms out and all of that fabric just came with it oh wow that was incredible the choice of the color as well with the blue looked fantastic it gave shape as well it must have been a very rigid fabric to have all that shape around her it looked stunning the hair was such a great choice with it as well sister sister's makeup looked okay with it talk about copying now let shall we <laughs> um yeah i thought this was probably the best that a horror's ever looked all season and it's one of my absolute favorite looks of the season so far incredible is some details and say like her photo shoot for example that she didn't do in the runway so the little metal i can't remember what they wear the metal bits on her waist and her ribs i think what she was trying to do was have that on her breasts instead so it was kind of like more of a breast play kind of bra but on the runway it was like part of the leotard and it was like sitting like down here but whereas on her photo shoot as you can see She's changed it and it is a bra, it's not sitting way low down. That was my only thing that I was like really critiquing as well as Sister Sister's makeup on her face. I don't think that really worked with the look. I think she could have just done normal makeup and it would have been fine. But <laughs> nevertheless, even though those small, small details picked my eye, this is such a gag. Shutting in next we have is Bimini Bon Boulash, giving us a Westwood inspired piece which is fantastic. I absolutely love this look as well and <laughs> very glad she went in a different direction from what she had before because that was trash. Now this look was stunning, I thought the print of the, it was curtains because you could tell there's big o-rings and um, so it was curtain fabric, that black and white silver even looked great fantastic and then the bright red with it as well i thought was such a great choice such such a great choice just to put it all together you know i do agree the bit of red at the front could have been done away with like show off a bit of leg you know as bimini loves to show off her body i think if she say took that red and put it on the back just removed it all together it would have really made this look just ah oh, just a, so much better and then showing off her assets and being again even more on brand for Bimini. The styling with this as well, the makeup, the hair, she knows how to do that really well with looks so no complaints from me here otherwise it is a gag. Next up is our bubblegum fantasy with Ellie Diamond giving us Katy Perry wonderfulness. This is fantastic, very on brand for Ellie being the baby doll of Dundee which I love, great. She's really kind of going in terms of her branding as well. Like, and they're all like complaining that, oh, it's like very sweet tooth and like the other girls and untouched. And I was like, get off, like, for Christ's sake, calm down. Y'all have a brand and that's hers. You know, like, what's the problem here? She really nailed all of the elements and what's I think great in her look most especially compared to everyone else's she really used a lot of things to her advantage a lot of items that they had available to them to her advantage using things like sponges as like a bustle or and padding to kind of give that skirt shape there were so many different elements with different fabrics different shades of pink different patterns all really worked well together she was really selective she could have for example just gone with the two pink fabrics or one of the pink fabric and one of the pattern fabrics and just did that but no she really was like okay this works together this works together here fantastic and then the plunger that she decorated with sweets i would not put my tongue near that thankfully i'm assuming it's not been used um but oh it looked so great so stunning no complaints here for me i'm rather sweet tooth myself and this look had me gagged and now in direct comparison to Ellie, someone else who used a lot in the workroom is Sister Sister, but maybe not to her advantage despite that extra 15 second head start that she had to grab basically everything. <laughs> she literally had that 15 second head start from the reading challenge, which was fantastic. <laughs> I think British queens tend to go a bit harsher with their reading 
um, basically all saying that they should, they should die, basically, which was crazy. But nevertheless, sister, sister grabbed everything. And that is good, but then you kind of want to make sure you edit, pick what you need and not go too far. You know, like what really goes together. Now, I elements of this I do like. I like the big flowers, I like the big leaves. I like the whole garden aesthetic she's going for, but it's giving me more feed me see more. Like there's just so much going on. It's hard to concentrate. I do like that she kind of tried to incorporate her makeup in with the flowers and the petals that she had, but there was just so much going on. There was no silhouette, and then she had that one trouser leg that was really weird, didn't fit in, and this didn't make sense. And that's also been edited for her photo shoot, it looks like as well. The look is just so overwhelming and she gets swallowed up by all of that fabric, all of those items that she's put on there. And by God, is this a hack. That's it for the queens and then the final lip sync taste beats Sister Sister to stay in the competition. So unfortunately Sister Sister is going home this week. Kind of a mixed bag through the competition, you know. Not always excelling, never got a badge, sometimes falling by the wayside. I love her drag aesthetic, like her Gay Times promo shoot was amazing. I loved her entrance look, there were so many things that I did love from her. But unfortunately someone's got to go home and this week it is her. Make sure to go follow her on all her social medias and spread love, not hate. She's had enough of that. Let's be real. Let's move on. Spread the love. For Gaggy's gag, I don't think this is any surprise, but Ahura blew this out of the park. Literally. It was so, so stunning. And also, go support her. She's got a t-shirt out where she is sending funds to the NHS from the proceeds of it. So make sure to go check that out. And let me know in the comments who was your gaggiest gag. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to press that like button down below, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you want to check out more of me, make sure to check me out on all social media at Julianne here. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye, folks.